Following the historical section, we can go on to the current performance section. Here you will need to consider the distribution of one year returns in isolation, which is therefore one variable analysis. You will then need to consider what factors may influence the one year returns, and so this means several bivariate relationships must also be analysed, but these will go into the next section. To start, we can have an intro sentence, plus something to indicate the focus of this section. For example, we could use something like, There are many funds offering products in the Australian superannuation market. In this section, the superannuation market will be investigated to determine the current levels of returns being achieved. Make sure you include a reference to the chart, such as Figure 2 illustrates the distribution of one-year returns within the sample of however many fund options being considered, keeping in mind that the sample size will depend on your outlier decision, so make sure you put in the right number. You would then need to include a histogram to visually show the distribution of returns. Below that, you would discuss the key features. Generally, a good summary of the features will include things like average, lowest value, highest value, variation and shape. It is also useful to note the modal class. Make sure that you do not just list these figures, but rather that you tell the story of what is being seen in the histogram, and so the measures that you calculate should be used within sentences. The features then need to be put in context and linked to real life. For example, you could think about and maybe include a basic numerical example comparing the financial impact of being in the highest or the lowest funds. You can think about things like whether the funds generally perform the same or if there are large differences, and even give some initial indication or suggestions as to why such variation may occur. Finally, a good concluding sentence for this subsection is to have a lead into the next section. For example, something like, in the next section of the report, factors which may influence the returns, such as the investment strategy, will be examined. In terms of the Excel, you will need to either use the built-in functions for things like mean and standard deviation, or the descriptive statistics tool pack to calculate the numerical measures. I would recommend calculating all the measures, but then thinking about which are best to include so as to describe the key characteristics of the one-year data. You will also need to make a histogram to visually show the pattern of the one-year returns data. Create the pivot table and group the returns into classes, keeping in mind that we would be aiming for six to eight classes for this amount of data as it is also useful to be able to easily distinguish between positive and negative returns in this context, it is useful to also make sure that a class boundary occurs at zero. Remember, you can just try some different class widths with the grouping in Excel and look at the results to help you decide what would be a good class width to use. Make sure your pivot table has a count for each class rather than something like a sum. You are aiming to count how many returns are in each class. Also keep in mind that Excel will convert the returns used in the class boundaries into decimal format rather than percentage format. And so if you want them to show as a percentage, then you will need to type over the class labels. Also, if you get a funny value for the class boundary that should be zero, this is just a quirk of Excel. The number shown is very close to zero, but feel free to replace it with zero by typing over the label. Turn your pivot table into a histogram and don't forget to format it, including making the gap width zero.